so in this part of the bhagavatam we are seeing the creation of intelligence so through this series of verses we have been seeing how lord kapila is explaining to his mother devahuti regarding the fundamental principles of material creation false ego is created and false ego being transformed a uh, false ego transformation in the mode of goodness created the mind so that we saw in the previous verses in today's verse we are seeing how false ego in passion that is ahankara in rajoguna it gives rise to what intelligence buddhi tattvam abhut it gives rise to intelligence so in the next three verses we'll be seeing about this intelligence so false ego in the mode of goodness transformation of false ego in the mode of goodness gives rise to mind transformation of false ego in the mode of passion gives rise to intelligence and in the later verses we'll be seeing false ego transformation of false ego in the mode of ignorance gives rise to objects of senses so here in these three verses among the three this is the first one taijasat tu vikurvanat taijasat means false ego in passion taijasat vikurvanat transformation buddhi tattvam abhut sati kapila muni is addressing his mother sati o virtuous lady buddhi tattvam abhut intelligence uh, was created or took birth or came into being what is this intelligence what role the intelligence plays dravya spurana vignanam dravya means the objects the earth water fire ether and the combination of them giving rise to various elements objects in this material world dravya that is objects spurana coming into view when the objects comes towards a living entity dravya spurana vignanam vignana means ascertaining determining or understanding ascertainment of an object when it comes into view when it comes towards a living entity to ascertain what it is to uh, make a decision how to relate with it see all these things are the work of intelligence indriyanam anugraha another point is to assist the senses indriyana anugraha anugraha means giving assistance so here we see major two points are being covered the role of intelligence the first one is dravya spurana vignanam the second one indriyanam anugraha dravya spurana vignana means ascertainment of objects when it comes in front and then helping the senses to relate with those objects so let us try to understand this with lot of examples here today many examples shila prabhupada gives and many examples we find in the bhagavatam so many times we would have heard about it but let us relate all of them in trying to understand the role of intelligence what it plays and then what is the ultimate intelligence or use of intelligence in its perfectional stage that today we'll be seeing <coughs> let us take this example the first one from the katha upanishad wherein the human body is compared to a chariot 
ఆత్మానం రథినం విద్ధి అండ్ బుద్ధిం టు సారథిం విద్ధి దేర్ ది బుద్ధి ఆర్ ఇంటెలిజెన్స్ ఇస్ కంపేర్ టు ది సారథి ఆర్ ది డ్రైవర్ సో హియర్ దిస్ డ్రైవర్ హీ ప్లేస్ అ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ రోల్ ఇన్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్టింగ్ మే బి ద ప్యాసెంజర్ ఫ్రమ్ వన్ ప్లేస్ టు హిస్ డిజైర్ డెస్టినేషన్ పాయింట్ we have this example or we have this experience in our temple maybe preachers sit in the vehicle in the car the driver comes and maybe first the driver he cleans the vehicle and keeps it ready where it is dirty all those things he checks whether the petrol is there or not if it is not there a decision needs to be taken uh maybe through the manager or through informing the preacher petrol needs to be put or if maybe half tank sufficient petrol is there maybe today we can go and come back the decision he has to take and once the preacher sit inside the vehicle goes outside maybe just going down there uh, from the reshma ilake full speed one vehicle may come immediately he may have to apply the brake there stop the vehicle then slowly take a turn a lot of cows will be there i have to slowly haul and slowly take the vehicle and especially when entering to the pre b road should be very careful looking for the vehicles coming full speed and then somehow then get into the track and then maybe after crossing the rayapur lake the decision should be taken he'll ask the preacher going towards hubli or towards dharwad if it is towards hubli take a right turn u turn and dharwad means go straight see all of these things at every step shri shri krishna balaram ki jai <coughs> he is seeing what is there in front he is aware of the destination point to be reached and taking decisions <coughs> so this example we can see the role of intelligence Uh, in the purport shri prabhupada mentions that by the proper use of intelligence one's consciousness is expanded and the ultimate expansion of consciousness is krishna consciousness let us take another example and try to understand this <coughs> say we are walking on the road uh, maybe especially in vidyanagar opposite of the bub college towards rambapuri kalyana mandap lot of eateries are there on the road side foot in the footpath so we go there and the pungent smell or whatever the flavor of varieties of things which are being freshly prepared there uh, all nice pani puri masala puri gobi manchur different things the smell is very strong a person walks in that road and he may be tempted to go and eat that if his intelligence is not strong it is not developed what will happen the temptation of the senses he may not be able to resist so he'll go ahead and pay some pay the money and what were some food path many things are there he'll go purchase that eat that later he may realize that he has developed some stomach problem because of eating some road side food then he'll realize oh next time i should not go there and take again maybe after few days walking to the same road again the same smell same attraction same temptation is there but if his intelligence is expanded he may be in a position to resist the temptation no 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 last time i remember eating that i had developed some stomach problem this time i will not take here then he may decide to walk till some further some other shop some good restaurant some hygienic place there he may go and take whatever the his whatever favorite items and uh, relish that what if there he goes 
regularly he makes a habit to go there and every day he is eating that again some health issues may start then again he will realize are are daily eating those things it's not good for my health maybe once or maximum twice in a week that is sufficient for me that is still a higher consciousness developed intelligence <coughs> he is able to identify what problems he is facing in his body with the relation to senses stomach whatever if he eats that stomach some problem is created so he is applying his intelligence what to do next all of these things so weekly once or twice let me take he may decide that maybe after few days then he may attend our sessions there then if at all some devotee goes and offers him bhagavad gita he reads that then he finds yes we should not eat anything and everything we should eat the food which is offered to krishna as prasadam then all the way he may find the address of our temple and come here and he may go to our bakery and purchase the item there eat only krishna prasadam so this is how the development of consciousness and the ultimate expansion of consciousness is krishna consciousness till the time he comes to the conclusion of accepting the instructions of krishna following those instructions in his personal life till then it is said whatever that expansion of his consciousness or intelligence or application of intelligence is imperfect or incomplete when will his application of intelligence becomes complete when that intelligence brings him towards krishna consciousness and krishna consciousness is said to be the ultimate expansion of a living entity's consciousness <coughs> now another story which shila prabhupada uh, narrates this is also very nicely beautifully it is explained how the, the servant who served the greatest this story you would have heard how there was a servant one person in a village he wanted to serve the greatest personality the greatest person in existence so from village he comes to the town and there in the market place he finds one big big shop and the owner sitting at the merchant sitting there and he is ordering tens of servants are there are surrounding him and he is issuing orders and getting the work done so this person thinks oh this person may be the greatest and he goes and begs for being engaged in his service so the merchant there he engages him in his work there in the shop after few days this person he sees one tax collector comes and the owner of the shop he is very fearful of him he gets up from his place he makes him sit and he offers all kinds of services to him and then he realizes are this person is not the greatest there is someone above him the tax collector is above this person so let me serve him and then later he realizes that the tax collector he'll go and report to the minister and the minister is going and reporting to the king and still is the king he is he the uh, topmost person or the greatest person no in the kingdom of the or were in the palace he finds one saintly person comes and the king offers his seat to him and washes his leg and the servant becomes bewildered and goes and asks the saintly person are you the greatest person or is there any other greatest person than you then the saintly person he answers i am not the greatest personality the supreme lord he is the greatest person where can i find him i would like to serve him so the saintly person shows him the route go towards the corner of the village towards the forest you can find a big hillock there and on top of that hill there's a temple of the lord there you can find him 
So immediately this servant rushes to that place. By the time he goes there, it was evening time, night time. The pujari had locked the temple and gone to his home. So this person thought, let me wait here. It was night time, so he slept outside the temple, maybe that veranda outside the temple hall. It was very cold. And the next day the pujari comes early in the morning and he finds a person lying there sleeping. To his surprise, he finds the cloth, uh, the dress of the deity, the upper garment was whatever is put on top of that sleeping man just like a chadar. And then he wakes him up, goes inside the temple and sees the same garment on the deity was found on that person there. And then he explains and then the servant realizes that yes, indeed, the Supreme Lord, Lord Krishna, He is the greatest personality, so great that His personal garment He has offered to me, looking at my distressful condition. So let me dedicate my life for His service. He is the greatest personality. So in this example also we see how gradually, first He found the merchant in one shop and then the tax collector, He is seeing he is observing at every level. He is applying his intelligence. What's happening there? And then gradually, finally, he arrived at the conclusion that yes, I need to serve the Supreme Lord. So this is nothing but ultimate Krishna consciousness, being engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord. In the Bhagavatam verse, we can find Yasyatma buddhihi kunape tridhatuke Atma buddhi uh, There it is mentioned how we step by step also if we take, analyze a person starts thinking himself Who am I? I am this body Kunape tridhatuke Kunape means a bag A bag containing containing three dhatuke, kapha, pitta, vata. It's a bag of these three dhatus. I am this body, he thinks. And then, svadi kalatra adishu. And then, little expansion of his consciousness, kalatra adishu. I am my, bo my body, and then I have my wife, I have my children, I have my home, my relatives, my friends, he starts identifying through all of them. Swadihi kalatra adishu and then bhauma ijjadhihi. Dihi means intelligence again. His intelligence maybe expands towards his the place of his birth, the country in which he is born. Hmm? He starts serving his community, his nation, his country and all of these things. Bhauma ijjadihi svatirta buddhi salile na karhid, karhishid janeshu abhigneshu. And then, if at all he becomes little religious, what does he do? Tirta buddhi, let me go perform one tirta yatra and what does he do? Travel to a distant place. Go take bath in some holy water and come back. Ah, my Tirtha Yatra or my religious duties are over. But he doesn't care for associating with Janeshu Abhigneshu. To Abhignya towards Abhignya Jana means towards qualified people that is referring to especially devotees, not associating with them. And such a person is still sa eva gokaraha. If he doesn't come to the level of associating with devotees, accepting the Supreme Lord and being engaged in his service, till that level, whatever level his intelligence takes him to, still he remains in the platform of gokaraha, in the animalistic whatever animal platform of a donkey, cow, ass, whatever. So only when he comes to the platform of accepting the Supreme Lord and being engaged in his service, 
he is on this level of uh, of an animal so finally let me uh, tell you this nice story from the fourth canto of bhagavatam there again very beautiful description is given by narada muni uh, he ex- when he explaining about the story of puranjana so many times we have heard this story how uh, puranjana enters the city of navadwara puri his objective is to enjoy enjoy that was his objective he enters the city of navadwara puri there he finds one beautiful girl and he becomes attracted to her becomes attached to her and marries her and this girl this lady she has got 10 servants very faithful very dedicated to her whatever she says the servants are ready to accept her orders and each of those servants they have got 100 wives each and then the entire city of navadwara puri navadwara is whatever that is being protected by one serpent having five heads so it all when all these circumstances this puranjana is nicely spending his time with his wife with that lady there being assisted by all of their servants being protected by that serpent of five heads like this time passes Uh, the lady there his wife she takes him through all of different portions in that navadwara puri different kinds of experiences puranjana has there and likewise 100 years passes now the 500 serpent it has lost its vitality chanda vega enemy attacks and he kills the uh, what was that snake and he attacks that navadwara puri and whatever smashes it into dust and finally he comes and kills puranjana and this puranjana since because he was too attached to his wife next life he gets a body of a woman and the story goes on big story this how narada muni uh, explains the story to king prachina barhi so after hearing this story the king questions narada muni see you are telling this story you know this allegory i am unable to understand what actually you are trying to tell me so then narada muni tells yes i'll explain that then he goes on explaining that this navadwara puri means it is referring to the human body and this human body which is being protected by the five headed serpent that is the pancha prana till the time it is there whatever things are taken care and once that is gone the entire navadwara puri will be gone and then he speaks about uh, whatever the uh, the queen and the assistants of the queen the ten assistants are the senses working senses and gnanendriya and karmendriya which is assisting the queen and each of those senses have got 100 wives that means each of those senses have unlimited desires which they go on satisfying and finally who is that queen huh? mind not the mind <laughs> intelligence buddhi it is the buddhi or intelligence the queen or whatever that lady there whom puranjana becomes attracted to becomes attached to her whole life he spends in listening to her she takes him through various kinds of experiences in that navadwara puri whatever she says puranjana was ready to follow whole life they were together thinking that okay she is very helpful she is assisting me she is giving me happiness she is giving me pleasure assisted by her servants in this way puranjana was thinking but when time came 
everything was finished the entire city itself was smashed so here while explaining this this is the verse we find in the bhagavatam when narad muni explains about the lady there the queen of puranjana or the buddhi buddhim tu pramadam vidyan mamaham iti yat kritam yam adhishtaya dehe smin puman bhungte akshabhir gunan so here it is said buddhim tu pramadam vidyan my dear narad muni is telling to prachina barhi king prachina barhi my dear king understand here the pramada that means the woman or the lady there she is referred to or she represents the buddhi or intelligence and what does she do by her influence mama aham iti yat kritam mama aham puranjana starts thinking or the living entity starts thinking i am this body things related to this body are mine this is what the whatever the lady or the pramada she does makes puranjana identify through that whatever navadwara puri and then yam adishtaya dehesmin adishtaya adishtaya means taking shelter of so this living entity has taken shelter of the buddhi or material intelligence and then puman bhungte akshabhir gunan akshabihi means the senses gunan coming under the influence of three modes of material nature he goes on satisfying his senses through the buddhi he starts thinking i am this body things related to this body are mine and being uh, coming under the influence of three modes of material nature starts providing all kinds of material sense objects for the gratification of the senses i'll read the translation the great sage narada continued the word pramada mentioned in this regard refers to material intelligence or ignorance so this point is also important in the purport also we nicely prabhupad explains this pramada refers to material intelligence or ignorance it is to be understood as such when one takes shelter of this kind of intelligence he identifies himself with a material body influenced by the material consciousness of i and mine he begins to enjoy and suffer through his senses thus the living entity is entrapped so we can see this entrapment how puranjana went into the city got attracted to that beautiful girl there and sufficiently spends time with her thinking that i am this is my country she is my wife and all of these are my servants they keep on assisting me and i'll enjoy here permanently but no this will not happen enemy chandavega comes attacks him and finishes finishes off the entire city hmm? that's how we a living entity enters this material world assumes a body different kinds of body based on his karma and desire starts thinking i am this body and things and people connected to this body are mine and goes ahead spending his time in enjoying his senses this is entrapment in this material world so we find in the purport <coughs> i'll read it out in material existence so called intelligence is actually ignorance this is very important this only a krishna conscious devotee can appreciate in material existence so called intelligence is actually ignorance agnana 
से ज्ञान अज्ञान जानी भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर सिंह वेन इंटेलिजेंस इज क्लियर्ड अप इट इज कॉल्ड बुद्धि योगा इन अदर वर्ड्स वेन इंटेलिजेंस इज डाउटेल्ड विद द डिजायर्स ऑफ कृष्णा इट इज कॉल्ड बुद्धि योगा और भक्ति योगा एस कृष्णा से इन द टेंथ चैप्टर तेषाम सतत युक्ता भजता प्रीतिपूर्वक ददा बुद्धि योगम तम ये नाम उपयांति ते वॉट इज रियल इंटेलिजेंस रियल इंटेलिजेंस इज बुद्धि योग वेन अ लिविंग एंटिटी हिस् कॉन्शियने इज कनेक्टेड विथ कृष्णा देन जस्ट लाइक लाइक एलेक्ट वॉट सॉकेट्स आर देर इट इज कनेक्टेड टू द पवर हाउस टिल द टाइम दट कनेक्शन इज देर how much ever how much ever what however we want the benefit of that power electricity we can derive from this socket when the connection is cut off then the power is cut off we can't derive anything likewise the intelligence what we are speaking of material intelligence which is there within a living entity that is nothing but ignorance when that living entity connects with the supreme lord then dadami buddhi yogam tam that is real intelligence given by the supreme lord how will this happen when will he give tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam those living entities satata yuktanam always or constantly bhajatam they are engaged in devotional service to the lord dadami buddhi yogam tam the supreme lord gives him the real intelligence otherwise all other intelligence what we speak of material intelligence it is nothing but ignorance that material intelligence we have to, we are supposed to use till the time uh, or uh, how uh, it helps us come to krishna consciousness see material intelligence also has a place in the previous verse we saw how the role of mind sankalpa vikalpa accepting rejecting always the mind accept accepts things which are favorable for sense gratification and reject things which are unfavorable for sense gratification so above the mind is the intelligence which we are discussing now so using the intelligence material intelligence what are we supposed to do try to come towards krishna consciousness how by accepting things favorable for krishna consciousness rejecting things which are not favorable for krishna consciousness if we take that example of that eatery that food item something he is eating till the level he comes to comes to the temple and purchases prasadam from here and eats that yes his material intelligence is using in the right direction and he has come to accept krishna prasadam here yes it has come to that level of what our krishna consciousness but that's not final especially in devotees case we may say oh already we have come already we have become krishna conscious no satatam satata yuktanam we should check for ourselves are we constantly undeviatingly engaged in krishna service have we made our material sense gratification zero may not be we are still in sadhaka stage some little proportion of service to krishna and some percentage of for our sense gratification also sometimes cross many a times it is subtle in the form of false ego there will be ego gratification or some fruitive mentality in the name of devotional service all of these things so in all of these things are there it is not we have not elevated ourselves to that ultimate platform or ultimate level of uh, intelligence or expansion of intelligence to the proportion we are engaged in service that proportion we are deriving whatever intelligence from krishna 
otherwise we'll be still be acting in material intelligence platform only using our material intelligence i'll continue reading its purport real intelligence means linking with the supreme personality of godhead when this is done the supreme personality of godhead from within gives one the real intelligence by which one can return home back to godhead real intelligence means linking with the supreme personality of godhead if it is done the supreme lord from within gives one the real intelligence <coughs> then intelligence in the material world is described in this verse as pramada because in material existence the living entity falsely claims things to be his he thinks i am the monarch of all i survey this is ignorance actually nothing belongs to him even the body and the senses do not belong to him for they are given to him by the grace of the lord to satisfy his different propensities through the material energy nothing actually belongs to the living entity but he becomes mad after everything claiming this is mine this is mine this is mine janasya moho yam aham mameti this is called illusion nothing belongs to the living entity but he claims that everything belongs to him so this is clear janasya moho yam aham mameti this is material intelligence then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu recommends that this false intelligence be purified and how to purify cheto darpana marjanam so in many places we have seen how the cheto darpana marjanam prabhupada translates it as cleansing the heart or cleansing the mirror of the mind here we see in this purport when the mirror of intelligence is polished the real activities of the living entity begin this means that when a person comes to the platform of krishna consciousness his real intelligence acts so till the time we come to the platform of ultimate platform of krishna consciousness then it's only our material intelligence what we are using okay what make best use of bad bargain use the material intelligence to come towards krishna to accept things favorable for krishna consciousness and after that complete dedication undeviating devotional service when we perform when we are completely connected with the supreme lord real intelligence is supplied to us from or by the supreme personality of god from lord krishna the last paragraph at that time he knows that everything belongs to krishna and nothing belongs to him as long as one thinks that everything belongs to him he is in material consciousness and when he knows perfectly that everything belongs to krishna he is in krishna consciousness see this is the understanding ultimately we are supposed to come to after all the use of our material intelligence experimentation ex- lot of various kinds of experiences what we undergo through our sadhana our reading everything what is the conclusion we are supposed to come to he knows perfectly that everything belongs to krishna then he is said to be in krishna consciousness we'll end with this more about intelligence we'll be finding the next two verses grantra shrimad bhagavatam ki shila prabhupada ki nitai gor premanandi hari bol